challenges that I face um, or that I have faced as a woman in leadership is when you speak, sometimes people don't take your word at face value. I've noticed, like when I served on the Water Commission, I was the only woman of a board of 13, so I was the only woman, and I was much younger than all of the men on the board. So when the men would speak, it was just taken as fact. But when I would speak or say something, it was like, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Don't listen to her. And I'll give you an example. The Water Commission was selling water for less than we bought it for. And we were using the sales tax to subsidize the rate. But if you looked at the audit, you could see that eventually you couldn't continue on that pace because the sales tax wasn't going to be able to cover that difference in the water rate. So I would vote against those water rate reductions and they all said, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And I kept questioning, I didn't understand how we had money left. Well, finally the financial advisor said, you have no money. The, the water commission was out of money. There was a forensic audit done and the audit actually credited member chaplain, but I was telling them that for years. But I think because I was a woman, they just discarded my comments. I think that's another challenge. Um, and I see it on other boards that I serve on, and I see it with other women on the county board. When we say something, the men don't sometimes take us quite as seriously as if a man were to say it. So I think we have to work double to show that we know what we're talking about. I feel it's important to have more women in leadership positions is because women have a different perspective than men. We see things differently. And we are, I think we're like 50.8% of the U.S. population. So I, I believe that women having a seat at the table brings a whole nother viewpoint. And sometimes, you know, having other views are a good thing and getting different ideas, whether it's from women or minorities, and bringing everybody's voice to the table makes for, I think, a better community. Sexism comes to mind in that when you, as a woman, you know, you are going into a meeting and you are presenting information or you're making an ask and you get the feeling or there seems to be a dynamic among the majority men that are all agreeing and all of one mind <laughs> when you are the one woman in the room that you're asking for something or you're proposing something or you're sharing an idea you can't help but wonder are you a victim of sexism you know or is it you know, not sexism, but maybe it's something else going on. You know, you don't want to want, is it racism? Is it both? But I think that when you are a woman and you are coming in, sometimes you are not taken as seriously. I believe that it matters. Representation matters because it is a reflection of what is possible. And so if you have someone, a person of color, someone who's in the LGBT community, someone with a visible disability or so, you send a message that is very forward facing to somebody else that may have those same identities to say, hey, I can do that. I can try that. I can aspire to make that um, happen in my world. So I believe that the representation matters because we have generations to come. Young women, if they set their mind to it, I think they can do anything that they want. You are, you all are the change makers. You hopefully will be more comfortable. You will be able to say, no, those are some false narratives, understanding really, really digging deep into what does that solidarity look like? And you have a seat at the table. So you gotta pull up that chair and, and scoot over, even if it makes you a little uncomfortable, scoot over and make some room for somebody that don't look like you.